Let's create a menu control with the enumerated data type and then use this as a selector for a case structure and a math script node switch statement. I'll begin on the front panel, right click, and then select ring and enumerated. I'm looking specifically for the enumerated control. The control initially is empty. I'll right click it and choose edit items. Here you'd want to type in meaningful labels for your application. For this demonstration, I'll just use generic letters, A, B, and C. Note that A corresponds to a numerical value of zero, B is one, and so forth. Each one of your labels has a unique integer value associated with it. You can pick the menu item using the up and down arrows, and you can also click directly. I'm going to now create a default indicator. This way we can get a sense of how the control produces values that can be used in your application. Notice that the indicator uses the label as opposed to the numerical value for display. I need to run the VI in order for the indicator to update. Notice that if I change to a different control input here, Nothing happens on the output until I actually run the VI. All right, let's take a look at two different ways that you could use this enumerated control. First is a case structure. When you first place the case structure, it uses a Boolean data type, and you only have two subdiagrams to pick from. When you connect to the enumerated control, we see that the labels that we had typed in earlier are starting to show up, but we're missing two of them. Right click and then choose add case for every value. Now we see all four showing up. If for some reason you wanted the default value to be something else, you can then pick the case that you would like, say the last one for example, choose right click and then make the case default. Now a case structure allows you to have multiple styles of calculation and I've taken just a quick time out to insert some options for each of the four cases. I can take the two values and either multiply, divide, add, or subtract. I've also created a numerical indicator for the calculation. Let's try this out. We see that for case A we get one result, case B for the division of course, we get a different result. If you look carefully at X, you can see the results changing for each of those selected cases. All right, that's the case structure. You can also use a math script node, particularly when you're using the switch statement inside that node. Let's take a look at this idea. In a similar fashion, you can connect the enumerated control directly to the case structure. I'll begin by adding an input. Then I'll connect that directly to the math script node. I'm taking a quick time out to add some constants for inputs A and B. At this point, I can type switch and then use my selector variable S. For the first case, which would be case zero, and it's important to note that you, you use the numerical values for each case rather than their labels. I might say for a case zero, X is supposed to be A times B. I could then fill in the remaining cases. Looks like I need a little more room here. Case three would correspond to the menu option that was labeled last. And it's always good practice with a switch structure to use the otherwise statement. We might say if none of the previous cases were met, then set the calculation to some default value. I'll add my output X, and then create an indicator for that. And let's just check to make sure this works. This would be the calculation for A times B. There's my calculation for a divided by B and so forth. 
All right, now you have two ideas where you might be able to use the enumerated control for your own application. I did want to note that for some reason, should you want to use the integer values directly rather than the labels, that's possible also. Look under numeric and then conversion. I'll convert the enumerated data type into its integer representation. Let's take a look at that result. And we'll run this for some choices of our input. There's A showing up as 0. There's B showing up as 1 and so forth. Okay, let me finish up by showing you some editing techniques once you have an existing control and you need to change it around. You can add an item before or after. You simply type in the new label and the numbering happens automatically. Although you'll notice one problem right now, we see broken wires, we see that the run arrow is broken. Let's see what's going on here. Opening up the context help says wire, the enumeration has a conflict. The problem has to do with the fact that the indicator I created earlier was tailored specifically to those four values that I'd typed in before. We've now added an additional value. To resolve that problem, right click on the indicator and say adapt to source. That way anytime you make changes in your menu or your enumerated control, then that shows up in the indicator too. Let's take one last look at edit items. I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that you can make use of insert and delete as well as moving things around in the list. For example, if I wanted to move D up a little bit, that's an easy way to reorder your menu options. All right, that wraps it up for now. Hopefully you have a better idea of how to use the menu control with the enumerated data type.